Open reduction in tendon fixation of forearm bone fractures. This video will include treatment of fractures and non-unions. Open reduction in tendon fixation. Majority of both bone forearm fractures require open reduction and internal fixation. We usually use a plate which will give a stable fixation and also a primary bone healing. So if they ask you about the bone healing with a transverse fracture of the radial shaft that is reduced and stabilized with a compression plate, the bone healing will be a primary bone healing with haversian remodeling. You want to delay removal of the plate because that remodeling may take up to two years. Early bone graft is not usually needed. Even with five degrees of angulation, you will do open reduction internal fixation of the radius and the ulna, and you must restore the radial bow. Early weight bearing after surgery is not safe. For non-comminuted fractures, you will use a compression plate technique. You want to achieve absolute stability. For comminuted fracture, you will use open reduction internal fixation with a bridge plate. We will use indirect reduction technique to achieve relative stability. We will use a biological technique to preserve the soft tissue attachments and to avoid devascularization of the fragments. So basically, in comminuted fracture, you will not disturb the fracture pieces. You will line up the fracture well. You make sure the rotation and the angulation are good, and you don't do early bone graft. The union rate does not differ between grafted and non-grafted comminuted fractures. If you wait a little bit more, the fracture will heal even if it is comminuted. Don't use a single incision, use two incisions, one for the radius and one for the ulna. If you use a single incision, there will be a higher incidence of synestosis, heterotopic ossification between the radius and the ulna, and that can limit the rotation of the forearm. How about open fractures? In open fractures, you will do irrigation and debridement and immediate open reduction internal fixation unless the wound is dirty. If the fracture is open and comminuted and the defect is more than one third of the circumference and less than five centimeter, then you will do bone graft or bone graft substitute depending on the case. If the defect is more than 5 cm, you probably will need a free vascularized fibular graft. When do you do open reduction internal fixation of the ulna? You will do it if the fracture is in the proximal third or if there is more than 50% displacement or more than 10 degrees angulation. And in the proximal ulna, you will use a posterior plate which will act as a tension band plate. It will resist the distractive forces across the fracture. How about Galeazzi fracture? Galeazzi fracture is fracture of the distal third of the radius shaft plus disruption of the distal radio ulna joint. If the fracture is less than 7.5 cm from the joint, there is a high incidence of DRUJ injury. How do you know if there is involvement of the distal radio ulnar joint? You can find an ulnar styloid fracture or maybe widening of the distal radio ulnar joint on the AP view 
or maybe a posterior dislocation of the ulna on the lateral view or shortening of the radius more than 5 mm. What we usually do is we do open reduction internal fixation of the radius first and then we check the stability of the distal radio ulnar joint. We may need to immobilize the forearm in spination or we may need to pin the distal radio ulnar joint if it is unstable. If the distal radio ulnar joint is irreducible, make sure that the extensor carpi and naris tendon is not entrapped into the joint. And for the metaphyseal radial fracture, you're going to use a lock plate if the patient has severe osteoporosis. How about the IM rod? The IM rod in adult will give you rotational instability and axial instability if the fracture is comminuted. There might be a high rate of non-union and it is difficult to achieve the radial bow non-union of the radius or the ulna. The treatment is compression plate and usually some sort of bone graft. So this is an example. A fracture radius was plated about eight months ago, ended by non-union. You will get blood work. You will make sure the sedimentation rate and CRP is normal. Then you remove the plate especially if the fixation is unstable, like not enough screws, the screws are loose. And then you will add 3.5 compression plate and bone graft. If you have a nail and non-union, you will remove the nail and you will do plate and bone graft. So if you have an ulnar nail or nail of the radius and it causes non-union, you remove the nail and then you will do plate and bone graft. So in general, you will do revision of the fixation plus bone graft utilizing the proper compression technique and the proper number of screws. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.